Hey guys, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a book tag for you. Um, and this is the Contradictions book tag. I was tagged to do this by The Writing Songbird. So thank you very much, Reese, for tagging me. This looks like a lot of fun and I'm going to be able to talk about some books I've never talked about on this channel, at least that I can recall. You know, after a year of doing videos, I don't remember all the books I've mentioned, but I'm pretty sure a couple of these I've never talked about. So. Uh, we're just going to jump right in, and yeah, the first question is, I love this genre, but didn't like this book. Okay, um, so my favorite genre is fantasy, so mostly any type of fantasy, and for this one's going to be interesting what I'm going to hold up here, but the book I didn't like, yes, I'm holding up the movie version because I don't have the book. So, um, uh, so I did not like Inkheart. Um, I know this is a very controversial opinion. The Inkheart book series, or so it's a trilogy as far as I know. I don't think there's a fourth book. It's just a tri It was just a trilogy when I read them. But I know people love this series, and I did not. Um, yeah, this is one of those rare cases where I say the movie is technically, is in my opinion, the movie is better than the book. Um, it wasn't badly written or anything. It was just... I didn't like it. I thought the characters were all irritating. Um, Meggie, who is the main character, is like a total brat in the uh, book, and she drove me absolutely bonkers. And then, as the series progressed, because this was back before I DNF'd books, so I kept reading the series like an idiot, and I just kept getting more and more irritated with them, more and more irritated with the characters did things, and I did not like any of those books, so... Yeah, I love fantasy. I hated those books, but the movie's really good. So if you're ever curious about it but don't want to read three really thick books, try the movie because it's really good. Okay, question two is, I rarely read this genre, but I love this book. Okay, I have two for this one, actually, and I just thought I'd show them both. Um, a genre I rarely read is suspense, like, th slash thrillers, unless it's, like, combined with something else, like, um... A dystopian series I like the author also has it as a suspense thriller as along with dystopian so that's kind of different when genres are matched like that I don't really mind but strict suspense thrillers I do not normally like mainly because I don't find them suspenseful enough I mean like suspense is in the title and most of the time I'm bored or I'm like okay things are happening but this really isn't very suspenseful but these book two books um definitely don't have don't have that problem and the first one is Guilt Hollow by Lori Langdon and I know this is kind of a spooky cover but it really fits the story and I I really like the cover I don't know what that says about me but I do <laughs> um this is a YA thriller obviously and yeah it's just it's really it's different from the norm um basically I mean it's basically about this uh our main character Willow her best friend was supposedly was convicted of murder when he was like 14 um but the thing is he never did it and then he comes back from he like ages out of the ages out of juvie or something like that he's like 18 now and he's come back to town and he's set on proving his innocence and getting the person who was never caught so it's a very intriguing concept and it is suspenseful it literally very much is um this it could also be considered kind of creepy for people who might be more sensitive to that but i loved it it was yeah very suspenseful i loved the characters so yeah that is the very first one uh, the second one i would more label this as almost a psychological thriller even though it's not creepy at all and that is losing brave by bailey madison and um, Stephanie Miller, I think that's how you spell, I think that's how you say the author's name, that the, her parents got really creative naming her. Um, this is like a really underrated YA suspense book, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, basically it's just about this, uh, girl, her name, what's her name? Peyton. Peyton, she, um, like, apparently was in the, she was in the, like, the same air room when her twin sister was murdered. But she never saw the killer, and she doesn't remember much of what happened. And it's the books, and then it's just basically her discover, trying to discover what really happened to her sister over a year ago when it's coming up on the anniversary of her death. And this is it's just really interesting. Um, I will say the very first few chapters, I was very confused and very like, 
what is this? Um, but it gets better after like, because I think I was like, it was like chapter three or four. I was hooked because I wanted to know what it was. And basically the book is written so weirdly, basically because we're viewing it through the viewpoint of how this character is viewing things. So it's almost like the book is written as her mental state if that makes sense. And it's really cool. It's really neat. I know a lot of people do not like it. I don't think it has a very high rating on Goodreads, but I really love it. I think it's like an underrated, underappreciated suspense thriller gem. So, um, yeah, I would highly recommend both of those books. <laughs> okay. Let me move this because I, I got stuff everywhere. Anyways. Okay. Question three. I love this trope, but I didn't like this book. Okay. Um, this one was one of the really hard ones for me to find something for or at least think about because honestly sometimes I don't can't differentiate between what's a trope, what's a cliche, what's a this. Sometimes that stuff kind of just gets muddled up in my head, which is kind of weird since I'm an author. I should know this stuff, but whatever, I don't. Um, but I did settle on one book um, that at least one trope that I do know of and that is Forbidden Romance. I love that trope, but one book that I... <laughs> had issues with, um, and that is Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. Uh, this uses the forbidden love trope, obviously, um, but yeah. Um, mainly I don't like, I like the way, the, bleh, the difference between a vampire and a human falling in love, that's fine. That is a fine trope. Uh, the problem I have with the forbidden love in Twilight is just the um, toxic relationship, basically. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much my only hang up with Twilight is pretty much the extreme kind of toxic relationship that Edward and Bella have. But beyond that, it's fine. So yeah, that's kind of all I got to say about that. <laughs> okay, question four. Okay, I hate this trope, but I love this book. Okay. Yes, okay. This is another one where I don't necessarily hate the trope, but I don't normally like it. And that is enemies to lovers romance. I know that is like a super popular uh, trope. Most people adore it. I don't normally, mainly because I find the whole, if they're truly really enemies, usually it's extremely petty or they're so hate each other. It's like, I don't even get it when they start loving each other because it's like, this makes no sense whatsoever. And without saying too much, I did find uh, one book that has this trope in it. It's actually a series um, that is ongoing, but the enemies to lovers part is in the second book, and that is Let Them Hear by Mackenzie Gray. This is book two in the Midnight Hours series. And there is, without going to spoilers, there is an enemies to lovers romance. Um, I would say technically it starts, their enemies part starts in book one, but both the characters are pretty young and the romance doesn't actually go anywhere until book two. So that's why I picked up this one. The first book is Those with the Ears. Um, but yeah, it's so, it pretty much starts there. But they're, I mean, the main character in that one, she's 15, I think. So, and I think he's, oh, I don't even remember how old he is. 16, 17? I, I forget. But um, they're pretty young and they're pretty just getting over this whole thing of the world has just ended. So, you know, we're not really that focused on romance right now. So it's more that aspect comes up in the second book. And I really enjoyed the way she wrote it. It felt natural to why you understand from book one, why they were enemies, but then they turn into something more. And I just really enjoyed that. So yeah, I would say that is really good one. Also, if you don't know, the series is basically, it's Christian dystopian. It's basically left behind, as I like to call it, it's left behind, but better. <laughs> so if that interests you. And the fourth book will actually be coming out later this year, I think. I don't know. I don't remember the exact date, but I do know she has released the cover so far. So, and it looks really cool. So anyways, um, <laughs> question five. I love this author, but I didn't like this book. Okay. Um, mainly for this one. Actually, I have one of the books here. I could just hold this up. Um, this is actually gonna go for a whole series. Um, and the author I, I really enjoy most, the majority of her books is K.M. Shia. However, the one series I have found that I do not like is her Timeless Fairy Tale series. Um, this is just one of the books in the series. It's, it's not that I dislike them because two of the books I gave four stars. I've read four, no, yeah. Four out of five of them or four out of, 
I've read four. I don't know what I'm saying. But, uh, so far, I've only given two of them four stars. The other two was a two star, and this one was a DNF. So, you'll hear more about this in my next recent reads video. But, yeah, I've just come to the conclusion that her fairy tale retellings, I just don't like. Um, I like more uh, depth in my stories, and hers are just more nice little stories, as this one especially, I cannot connect with the characters at all. So, yeah. Um, so, I de definitely love her other books, because I definitely love her Metaphor books, and her Retha series, and her um, Elves of Les Lessa series. I really like those three, but... Um, her fairy tale series, not so much, so there is that. Okay, question six. I previously disliked a book by this author, but I loved this book. Okay, this one comes with a caveat, because I have not read this book in a hot minute, so I don't know if I still love it. <laughs> but, um, I used to really like Melanie Dickerson's stuff back in the day. She's a Christian historical fiction, like, fairy tale retelling author, and... At the time when I was reading her Hagenheim, Hagenheim, I'm not German, so I don't know how to pronounce that incorrectly. Most people have seen pronounced it Hagenheim. I don't know if that's correct. So that series, um, which is kind of her main series, or it was her main series at the time. Anyways, um, when I was reading those books at the time, I did not like The Merchant's Daughter, which I know is also an unpopular opinion because most people see seem to really like that book. So naturally, I did not. <laughs> because that is the way I roll. But, yeah, um, I did not like that book, um, like, at all. I even reread it to see if I liked it better, and I, I think I liked it less, so there's that. Um, but I did really enjoy this book, and it was The Princess Spy. It's, like, book seven. I honestly don't remember what number it is, and it doesn't have a number on it, so that's really unhelpful. Anyways, um... I really, really like The Princess Why. It's probably one of my favorites by her. Caveat, though, I have not reread this book, so I don't know if I still love it or not. But I really hope I do, because I do. No, I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, I've read it several times, at least in the past, and yeah, I still really hope I like it. I might reread it at some point, probably not this year, but who knows with my mood these days, so all my plans for reading stuff has flown out the window, so, you know, who knows, maybe I will read it. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, still really enjoy this one. It's a retelling of the Frog Prince, and yeah, this one has always been uh, one of my favorites, if not my favorite by her. Okay, question seven. I love this cover, but I did not like this book. Okay, this one, um, Honestly, I'm kind of sad to talk about this one because I really wanted to like this book, but, and I don't think it's bad per se, it just, anyways, we'll just get to it. And that is Shadow Angel by Leah Stone and Julie Hall. I mean, look at the cover. It's gorgeous. I love the covers for this trilogy. They're gorgeous. The window's glaring on it, so you can't really see it that well, but I, I adore these covers, but... Um, I actually started reading this book last year. I ended up DNFing it at, I forget what it was, 20 some percent or something like that. Mainly, I just kept getting a bad feeling about it just because it's kind of a, it's a supernatural thing of like these, um, people have like half angel blood in them, stuff like that. But the problem I was having was one of these schools that the main character was going to have to choose between. They like serve demons. And I'm pretty sure by the end of the series, they all get out of that situation and, you know, uh, join the, you know, good side, so to speak, but I don't know. I didn't really like that. I didn't like some of the choices the authors was making to kind of get the romance started, and I was just very disappointed by it, and I just kind of felt very convicted to not keep reading that book, even though I love Julie Hall's Life After series, which is really good. Um, that is Christian spiritual warfare, supernatural books, and it is excellent, but it doesn't have any of that problematic stuff I was having issues with with Shadow Angel but yeah um I'm really disappointed though because I really wanted to like it because I love the cover and the concept was interesting it started out really interesting but yeah there were just things in it that I didn't care for and I just didn't feel like I should be reading so that's why okay question eight I don't like this cover but I love this book okay this also comes with the caveat because this series actually has new covers that are gorgeous. But I have the old cover version of the first book, and that is Fierce Heart by Tara Grace. 
I mean, um, I'm sorry, but th this cover is not it. <laughs> um, yeah, I do realize the author was starting with like lower budget and stuff like that when she first started out. So she needed a cover she could afford and stuff like that. And not just like, cause now they're like art pieces that she has and they're gorgeous. But I had the old cover version for the first book and I don't like it, but I adore this book. So, and I don't know if I'll actually repurchase the first book in the new cover and that might seem a little much also my sister gave me this for Christmas so it kind of feels like yeah I don't like your book anymore but <laughs> even though that's not the case but whatever um but yeah don't really love this cover but I adore this book okay and the last question is nine to tag someone um I don't know who has done this tag who has not done this tag so um I'm going to tag uh, Lindsay from BFCG and I will also tag book lover Amanda. I don't know if she's done this tag or if somebody's tagged either of these ladies or not, but um, yeah, feel free to do this video or not. I mean, if anyone else sees this video and thinks that looks like fun and you have a YouTube channel, go ahead and consider yourself tagged and just go ahead and take the questions and do them. I will leave the questions down in the description. Um, also, if you don't have a YouTube channel, but you want to answer these questions and you want me to see the answers, feel free to fill it out and put them in the comments because I'd love to see um, your answers on this. So yes, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That is the tag and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you got some opinions about, or at least got some inklings of opinions I have about certain books. <laughs> um, yeah, and as always, I always enjoy hearing from you guys in the comments, so feel free to comment down below if you feel so inclined. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time, guys. Bye!